Hey everyone, Scott Winger here from The Scott Winger Show. If you're interested in some of the other content that I have, be sure to check out the link in the bio. Today we're going to talk about uh, the political reporter Heidi Prisbola and her comments about, quote, the dangerous Christian nationalists that are aligning themselves with Donald Trump. She said, quote, the thing that unites them as Christian nationalists, not Christians, because Christian nationalists are very different, is that they believe that our rights as Americans and as all human beings do not come from any earthly authority. They don't come from Congress, from the Supreme Court. They come from God. Wow. Heidi, I wonder, have you ever read this thing called the Declaration of Independence? You might have heard about it when you were going through, you know, elementary school, middle school, high school, and hopefully in college, right? Um, yeah, it says in the Declaration of Independence that when in the course of human events, it becomes necessary for one people to dissolve the political bands which have connected them with another and to assume among the powers of the earth the separate and equal station to which the laws of nature and of nature's God entitle them, a dec decent respect to the opinions of mankind requires them that they should declare the causes which impel them to the separation. And then it goes on to say, you know, we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal, that they're endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, that in order to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed. Okay, so here's the deal, Heidi. It's not like Jefferson invented that. Jefferson was really just adding to a 2,500 year old idea that basically goes all the way back to the foundations of Western uh, society itself. Okay. So I want to break that down for you. Okay. Because I've been classically trained and I've even taught in a classical school. I've even been the headmaster and have run a classical school and I am an, also an intellectual historian. So let me try to help you out, okay? The idea here is that God, whether you believe in him or not, it doesn't really matter. At the end of the day, God as an idea, you can believe in him as an actual deity or you can just sort of understand that he's the highest authority in the universe, okay? So if your rights come from the highest authority in the universe, then no lesser authority can take them away from you. You see, Heidi, the problem with your whole ideology here and your, your sentiment here is that if governments, which are made up of men, are the ones that give us our rights, then governments made up of corrupt men also then have the authority to take them away. But by saying that our rights come from God, whether you believe in him or not, that makes it really hard for anybody to take them away from you. And I hate to tell you this, but men are the ones that trample, trample over men's rights all throughout history. So understanding that right there is essential to understanding America. And it's very clear that you do not understand what America is about, what it was founded for, or even the purpose of government. In fact, Heidi, I dare say you probably can't even define what a right is. In fact, if you were to look up the term rights in the dictionary, what do you think it would say, Heidi? Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, yeah, that's what I thought. Unfortunately for us in America, 99% of Americans don't know the definition of rights. And so when we're talking about somebody like Heidi uh, Prisbola getting out there and saying that like all these people think that rights come from God, they're ridiculous. We can't even define what a right is. We can't de define it. It comes from uh, it, the, the term right itself is Latin in origin, but the idea traces its way back all the way to ancient Greece. And the Greek word for rights is dikaiomata, that which is morally just, okay? That which is morally just and right, okay? So this idea, and in Latin, uh, right, think of like a right angle. It's not crooked, it's straight, Okay. It's just, it's correct, it's right, morally correct and just, okay? That's what a right means. So when we say we hold these truths to be self-evident, then all men are created equal and they're endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights that among these are life. So you have a right to live, okay? If I try to murder you, okay, I'm morally wrong for that. You have a right to liberty, 
the government shouldn't be coming down on people and saying you can't do you know you can't worship at a church you can't uh you know say whatever you want to say like think of a government like north korea they are not a justifiable government because they trample over the rights of their own people the people are not allowed to go to church and worship god however they want or even you know I'm talking about any religious uh, activity whatsoever. Uh, they are not allowed to go out and say, Kim Jong-un's a stupid fat uh, jerk. You know, they're going to get shot in the back of the head if they say that. Um, because a government like North Korea defines justice not as an objective term, the way that we're supposed to have justice here in America, but rather they define justice as might makes right. And so because they're able to define what justice is, then whatever definition they decide justice is, okay, they're always right because they get to make define the terms for it. And so me saying Kim Jong-un's a fat SOB, I'm getting shot in the back of the head, and that's justified because I'm attacking their glorious leader, um, and they define justice. However, that's not what justice is. Uh, we've always rejected that theory of justice in America. We've always thought that we should have equal justice under the law. Why? Because governments, in order to secure the rights of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, etc., that's what they're instituted for. We institute the government in order to protect our natural, unalienable, God-given rights that are objective in nature. Okay? You know, you, you, you made reference, Heidi, uh, in, in your commentary that the so-called natural law, what are you talking about? The so-called natural law. What makes it natural law is it's literally observable in nature, okay? You're telling me all the time, your side is telling me all the time that I need to follow the science. Well, follow the science. Use some freaking empirical evidence and look around throughout the course of human history. Name me one society where I could walk around and indiscriminately murder people on the street and then be okay with it. You can't name one. And the reason you can't name one is because it's obvious. People have a natural, universal right to their own life. And I cannot justifiably walk up to somebody and like mow them down or hack them up with a machete in a public square and that society, regardless of what it is, be okay with it. That's what makes it natural law because it's observable in nature and it's universal in its application. You see, it doesn't matter if I had a time machine and I went back to Saudi Arabia in you know 500 AD and started just hacking people down with a sword in the marketplace, they're not gonna tolerate it, all right? Another case in point, if I go to the Amazon rainforest, I can find people there indigenous tribes in the Amazon rainforest that have had no contact with the outside world. Even today in 2024, you can find people in the Amazon rainforest because it's so dense that have had no outside contact with the outside world whatsoever, which means that any culture that they do have has been uniquely crafted within their own civilization, right? If I walked into that tribe and started killing people indiscriminately, are they going to put up with that? No, they're not. Why? Because it's natural law. It doesn't have anything to do with their religious beliefs. It doesn't have anything to do with, you know, their, their own subjective morality. What it has to do with is the fact that we as human beings have this thing called a conscience. And that's another fancy Latin word that you probably should have learned in all of your education. I know you're an educated person. You went to college, right? Conscience means with knowledge. And what that indicates by its very nature is that, like, for example, if you have a guilty conscience, you're guilty with the knowledge that what you did was wrong, which indicates that there is such thing as objective right and wrong. So don't tell me that Christian nationalism is going to be this big threat to democracy because we believe in natural law and natural rights. The very purpose of our entire republic is to protect the people's rights. 
And if the government, if you get your way, you leftists out there, if you get your way and you get to get rid of all that, I have news for you. The Declaration of Independence says that governments shouldn't be changed for light and transient causes. However, after a long train of abuses and usurpations show invariably a design to evince to place a people under absolute despotism, it's their right, it's their duty to throw off such government. That's why we got rid of the British government back in 1776. It is a natural right of people to elect a government that will protect their rights. And you can't take that away either.